Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Jenna. I write science fiction and fantasy novels, and on this channel we talk about all things creativity and how to put the magic back in your writing. Today we have a controversial topic. <laughs> that is how to vet writing advice. There's a lot of advice on the internet. There is a lot of stuff on YouTube itself, which obviously is where you're getting this advice from right here, but I think it's important to set your own standards regarding where you're going to get your writing advice from, because a lot of people will lead you astray, and not because they're trying to necessarily, but simply because what worked for them they think is monolith and works for everybody, and that is not always the case. In fact, it's almost never the case, but we'll get into that with one of my tips. So my number one tip, and this is just if you've listened to anything in this video, is this one thing, and that is set your standards, and your standards are going to be different from other people's, and that is something so important to have as a note. You might just like someone's style of how they give advice, and that's all you cater towards. However, I think we need to start having a little bit more of a bigger, clearer standard of who we are getting writing advice for, and that is going to change from person to person. For me personally, I know that I don't like to take writing advice from somebody who I have not read their work before, and I want to at least enjoy it. And even if it's not in a genre I necessarily enjoy, I can see the level of craft and knowledge that they have. But other people, that might not be a deal breaker for them. They might read someone's writing and not necessarily like it, but then think that their advice is good. For me personally, I think someone could give great writing advice and it could be objectively good, but the writing just might not be on par with the advice that they're giving. Is that a deal breaker for you? That is the standard you have to set for yourself. I think it's also important to go, oh, I didn't like what they writing so I'm never gonna watch any of their videos, I'm never gonna read their blog posts, I'm never gonna listen to their threads on Twitter. It honestly depends on your perspective, but then also are you looking at the writing objectively? Are you looking at do they have a certain level of craft? Um, what are their... Um, do they have any awards? Do they have anything backing up their ability to give writing advice? Some people might be just more academic than you are and their writing is more academic so you don't like that, but can you see that they are a good writer regardless? And is that the standard that you set? If that's not your standard, do you simply get writing advice from everybody? And that is something you have to set for yourself. Again, for me personally, and this is me personally, not saying that everybody has to go through my standards, you should set your own. But for my standards, I like to be able to read someone's writing, I think it should be easily accessible to all, and that I should be able to see some level of objectively good writing in their work that they're sharing. Um, whether or not that is writing in a genre that I like. I don't really cater towards that. I think you can write in any genre, you can be a good writer. Um, and it might not be the style that I like, it might be a little bit too academic for me. Um, that doesn't mean that they're a bad writer though. It simply means that it's not my favorite, but I think their writing advice is still good so I would still follow it. And I also think there's a difference here between writing advice and publishing advice as well. For example, do you have a standard where if I'm getting querying advice it has to be from someone who has an agent? Or do you think more so that it's more broad and open um, Thing where you're going to get writing advice from people who are self-published and traditional published um, and it doesn't matter if they have an agent or not. Where do you draw the line regarding publishing advice as well is something that I think we have to start talking a little bit more about. So again, for me personally, I think that when it comes to self-publishing, I really want to get advice from someone who has done self-publishing, who has at least a book out or is somewhere on a step ahead of me. And then when it comes to traditional publishing, I think a lot of people who have failed in the query trenches do have a lot of advice, especially given I would rather get someone's advice who went through the query trenches recently versus someone who went through the query trenches 10 years ago because that advice kind of no longer works. <laughs> I think it just matters of you setting your own standards and then following through with them and, you know, deciding, okay, I'm only going to get writing advice from these kinds of people who do these kinds of things. And that is just a way for you to make sure that you are comfortable getting the advi writing advice that you are receiving. There needs to be sort of a permission, like I'm giving permission to this person to give me writing advice because they have XYZ criteria. But I feel like if we set a standard for ourselves, then we know that, hey, I have a standard of where I'm getting writing advice from and I'm not going to steer from that. And then that can kind of prevent us and help us to avoid receiving writing advice that may harm us or may not even be relevant to what we were doing. For example, if you're like, I'm only going to get writing advice from people who write in my genre, I'm only going to get advice from people who have a similar style to me, and let's say you're not very into academic styles of writing, um, you're more into, I want fiction, novels writers only who write contemporary romance. Okay, well you just got rid of a lot of writers, including myself, so you should probably click off. <laughs> but this advice may be just a little bit more catered to you, especially if the person is not giving a disclaimer of, hey, I am a this writer, this is what I write, this is the experience that I'm pulling from. 
but everyone's standards are going to be different. And I think that's the important thing that we need to discuss a little bit more. And because I'm expressing to you guys what my standard is, I'm going to live up to my standard. <laughs> This is why I have been sort of holding back from giving too much writing advice on my channel before and it's honestly hindered me being able to make videos um, simply because I wanted to be able to share with you guys part of my work because if my standards are I want to be able to read someone's work and see if I like it before I give you know, get writing advice from them, then I'm going to let you guys read my writing. I've had beta rounds open quite a lot throughout the life of this channel, however, I have never shared the things publicly where people don't have to sign up, so if you click down below and you want to vet me, I have the first chapter of my queer space opera on my Patreon, but it is free for everybody to go and read, um, and it is now up for everyone to enjoy. So I'm now living up to my standards if you want to go read the queer space opera of my heart that's growing currently in the query trenches, that's hard to say, it's linked down below on the Patreon. It's free for everybody to read. But if you want to read more of my work, you can go to a paid tier and you'll be able to have more access to the things that I'm writing, including a Viking spicy romance. Next piece of advice I can give to vet writing advice is to look at the comments. Now whether this is the comments of blog posts, a YouTube video, etc., just look at what people are saying and how they are reacting to the advice giving. Like if there's a large Twitter thread of advice, if there's a lot of quote tweets but not a lot of likes, might be the case that people are shitting on it. This might not be relevant if Twitter is dead in a couple months, but, or sooner, who knows, but just an example. But when you look at the comments, remember that these are people who might not have your best interest in heart either, and not necessarily people giving the advice either have your best interest in heart. You have to think for yourself, okay, is this person a very disliked, you know, polarizing figure in the author community? Um, do they write problematic books? Is that why people are shooting on them? Um, you know, think clearly about who and why they're giving advice and how people are reacting to it and why they're reacting to it in a certain way. Is it because it is objectively bad or do people just tend to disagree with everything the person says? Or should you not be getting writing advice from that person at all because they write like racist books? Because that should just be an automatic and very obvious. Don't listen to them. Check. That's why I didn't bother making it a point on this video because it should be blatantly obvious, but if I have to say it again, if you're getting your writing advice from someone who's racist, homophobic, ableist, etc., you probably don't want to be getting your writing advice from someone who is racist, homophobic, ableist, etc. Similar to that last point <laughs> is listen to your gut. If you think, hey, I think this person's got good advice, but I'm just not vibing, then guess what? You're not vibing. It could just be the advice is not for you. And that doesn't mean that they're, uh, you know, some writer out there evilly plotting to steer you off course. It just simply means, hey, I'm not really liking their personality. Hey, I don't like their tone of voice. I don't like the, you know, publishing path that they're on. I don't think it's for me. Then guess what? It's not for you and you don't have to listen to it. Next thing is a giant red flag that I think everyone needs to watch out for is ego giving writing advice. Not the person giving writing advice, they're ego giving writing advice. Or they're a type of person who go out there and says, my way or the highway, it is only my way, this is fact, this is, and it's, you know, not actually a fact. <laughs> but if they're trying so hard to get you to go on a very specific way and not even giving you the caveat of, this is what worked for me, do what works for you, then it might just be their ego talking, it might not be them talking. I see this happen a lot when people give advice on whether or not you should go the traditional publishing route or self-publishing. A lot of people on either side tend to say things that are not true about the other side to get people to go to their side. Um, and so as someone who is on the path of most likely going hybrid, there's no reason for this divide. All it does is hurt the writing community and lying about each other's paths just doesn't work. People are hopefully smarter than that <laughs> and get their writing advice from multiple sources. I highly recommend no matter what publishing path you're going on to get advice from people who are self-published and on the traditional route as well so that you can get the best of both worlds so that you, for example, if you're going trade and you're like, oh, I don't need to know a thing about self-publishing, guess what? Self-publishing does marketing fantastic. You might want to go and listen to them. All in all, definitely watch out for the ego talking rather than the person. And my number one piece of advice through all of this, besides obviously setting your standards, is what works for one person doesn't have to work for you. You don't have to punish yourself and make yourself follow a very specific route. I think everyone should have the caveat of, you know, either in the description or in their video or in their blog post that this is what worked for me, but it might not work for you or do your own path. Just because someone says you have to write every day, guess what? 
George R. R. Martin does not write every day. It's the huge divide of are you a Stephen King person who writes every single day? Are you a George R. R. Martin who just writes when the inspiration hits? Obviously, there are pros and cons to both, but doing what works best for you in all matters of your writing career and your writing passion is how you keep the creativity flowing. If you try to shove yourself into a box because you're trying to listen to tons of people's advice, guess what? People's advice are going to contradict each other. People's advice might not just be for you. You might have your own advice that you want to share with people, in which case I encourage you to start your own channel or blog or Twitter thread um, until Twitter dies and we find a different place to go <laughs> as a writing community. <laughs> I just encourage everyone to think critically about where you're getting into your advice and also to vet the advice when possible against the scale of does it meet my standards? Is the person, you know, ethically okay to get advice from? Are people in the comments agreeing with them or disagreeing? Are you listening to your gut? Are they talking with their ego or not? Or are they acting like their way or the highway? Or just does their advice go against what your own personal beliefs in your writing are? If someone says, oh, you can only use the save the cat beat sheet. Okay, well, what if you use the hero's journey? <laughs> Whatever works for you is what works for you because that is what helps you write the story. And in the end, that's what we need to do is write, edit, and publish our stories. And if people's advice are preventing you from doing that, then guess what? You don't have to listen to it. And that's all for me for right now. But if you want to check out what I am currently writing and what I was just working on for NaNoWriMo, you can click the video that's going to show up in the end screen. That's it for me. So remember to subscribe for more writing videos every Friday where we again put magic back in writing. I'll catch you guys next time. So bye.